Okay, I'm here with Sean Connect, and can you tell us what your organization is? I actually work for the University of Wellington graduate student at the University of Washington right now. Oh, okay, so you're from Washington State then? Yes, uh, yeah. Seattle. Well, we're, we're up in Seattle also, up in Redmond. Well, and you're presenting a paper on plasma effects, right? Um, it's more a, a parametric study of a, of a fusion propulsion power system. Well, can you tell me a little bit about kind of the concept behind it? or? Um, yeah, a little bit. So, the system that we're investigated, that we investigated in this study is called the Dense Plasma Focus which is similar to a Z-pinch geometry, uh, which coincidentally is my graduate research at the University of Washington. So basically what we've done is extrapolate, we, given certain parameters, in this case they were propulsive parameters, thrust, ISP, etc. Sure, sure. And uh, a proposed fusion gain, we varied system, other system parameters, uh, to get kind of a mass and volumetric estimate of what a DPF system to obtain these propulsive parameters would, would be like, you know. It was actually to be used in a different study, um, which is more of a, a vehicle system integration uh, type of thing. So you guys are basically focusing on plasma and then now does, does the plasma itself generate thrust? Is it kind of a reaction mass or? It can be. Um, it itself can be, depending on what you use. Um, it would be... Its fuel could be ejected, yes, for, uh, for, for thrust, yeah. Oh, well, I'm just well, hoping to understand how the plasma well, is involved with producing thrust, I guess. Is it rea a reactionless thrust, or...? No, no, definitely not, def definitely not reactionless. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a fusion reaction, which is generating all the uh, all the heat that you need, essentially heat. You know, you have uh, this high temperature plasma we're talking about. For a dense plasma focus, we're talking about 100 keV, which is, off the top of my head, well, es essentially one eV is about 11,000 Kelvin. So, <laughs> it's been a rough day, so I can't do the math. Oh, no, that's <laughs> cool, that's cool. Yeah, I'm just trying to get kind of a general feel for the technology. Well, what do you think this thing will look like? I mean, if they actually build one of these. You know, you've got, is, is this going to be like a rocket with kind of, kind of a fusion rocket then with, with fuel that accelerates or it more of be, a MHD? Be, um, you know, one of the, uh, there's, there's two ways you can go. You can exhaust the reaction products of the fusion reaction or you can inject some other kind of fuel into it as essentially a heat sink. And not only is the fuel a heat sink, it also becomes the exhaust. Oh, okay. So that would be a way to get much higher thrust if you were just exhausting uh, reaction products, depending on what fuel you're using, you would get extremely high ISPs, but maybe maybe not so high thrusts. Yeah, now how would this compare to, to a rocket, right? Like like maybe one of the conventional launch platforms or something? Well, this would not be something that you would use as a, as a launch system. This will be something that once you get yourself into orbit, then you can, you know, lower transit times. So, so it's more, more comparable maybe to an ion drive, right? Where you could turn it on and leave it on. Right, but in this case, it's in comparison to an ion drive, it's extremely high thrust. Sure, sure. With, you know, you could get comparable ISPs and maybe even greater ISPs, depending once again on what kind of fuel you're injecting, what you're using. Yeah. Now, do you think this might have a role mostly in satellites, or do you think you could use in larger systems like maybe the upcoming proposed Mars missions? I like to think that uh, it could be used for definitely for human exploration. Yeah, yeah out to Mars and maybe even beyond. But what do you think, the transit, because right now the transit time I think is 24 or 18 months, something around yeah, there, so. Yeah, it's about that, I suppose. Um, well, it would significantly reduce it. I couldn't quote you a figure off the top of my head, but it's really significant yeah. reduction. Yeah, well, off the cuff, maybe cut it in half, do you think, or uh, maybe? Probably even more than that. Oh, okay, because this, this would almost be kind of the fast track to other planets. Exactly. At least within the solar system. Yeah. So. And, you know, if, if you wanted to use it on a, uh, let's say, in a more near Earth, let's say we wanted to colonize the moon, something like this could, assuming you, you could get a large enough uh, spacecraft up there, you could carry a lot more, you know, the equipment. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's really limited by what we can get off the Earth's surface, so... If, yeah. If that were to ever change, then then yeah, you could 
Well, I think right now Lunar Transit is something like three days with an Apollo-style mission, and you know maybe maybe a little bit longer if you have to haul more stuff. Yeah, I believe you know. it's a little longer than that. So, so this might, if they could cut that down to a day and a half or so, but you know, then you're talking about something that's comparable to early airline flights. That's not bad for transit to the moon. Oh yeah, that's, that's exactly true. Yeah. Well, now, has, has your paper, have you had any solicitations by any organizations like, like, you know, the X Prize is always looking for new ideas. Generally, they like people to submit them, but, you know. Uh, this is, this is a little too uh, long term, far term. Mm, okay. To, to be solicited at this point, I mean. Well, I guess the, the there, other there's there's some in, in a DPF system there's some significant uh, obstacles that need to be overcome. Significant. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, in in terms of actually prototyping something like this, I mean, it, it would seem difficult to come across the fusion stuff. Weirdly enough, this this conference seems to have a ton of guys that could probably help. But but uh, you know, generally speaking, right? We don't just have the you know fusion materials at home, but. Is there some way to maybe substitute a different heat source? So, um, kind of modify it for lab testing to see if it works sort of like you're suggesting, or? Uh, I don't know, the, the, the heats that you're talking about in this thing are... Oh, so it's so un extreme. Unattainable with, with, you know, anything conventional. Sure, sure. You know, I'm, I'm sure someone put a, a you know, significant study to it, maybe you could come up with some kind of scaling, but... Oh, yeah. Off the top of my head, there's nothing conventional that you could use. Yeah, well, the reason I ask is, you know, a lot of times they like to have some type or other of, you know, validation for, you know, is there an experimental test or this or that before they move into a larger project, and, you know, I I is it possible that some of these effects might be seen in, like, solar phenomena, you know, or, or you know interstellar phenomena that, that maybe you could draw parallels from? It's, uh, uh, it's a different regime mm -hmm. of plasma equilibrium. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So you, something that you would see, you know, in, a, in the solar corona wouldn't... Uh, sure. Different type yeah, of it's, phenomena. It's well, well, now in terms of, you know, private industry, because, um, you know, I mean, in addition to the X Prize, which is bringing together a pretty, pretty diverse group there, you've also got Bigelow Aerospace. And Bigelow, it seems, is not adverse to investing his own money in some of these ideas. I noticed, yeah. Yeah, so for something like that, what, what do you think the price tag would be for even your initial test-level device, do you think? Mm. Well, I mean, the bigger issue is you're talking an extremely long-term study. I mean, this is like 25 years in the future. Oh, this okay. This is what I'm talking about. So it, it, it would, I wouldn't be able to to quote any kind of figure like that, no. Okay. Well, again, it's Sean Connect from the University of Washington. I'd just like to say though, that uh, these are my views, more, not my universities. Okay, thanks. <laughs>